Hello everyone, this is me, Garima Singh. Today I'll discuss this chapter that is 11th chapter International Trade. Here we will discuss trade with other countries that is international trade. All this is possible because of globalization due to the new economic policy that was come into effect in 1991. So we are able to do trade with other international boundaries that is international trade. In this chapter we will discuss about uh, changing pattern of the composition of Indian export. So <clears throat> changing pattern you can see here and as from this uh, table you can just assume that uh, during recent year a change has uh, been recorded in the composition of commodities in India. In India's international trade, there is a decline in share of agriculture and allied product, whereas the share of crude and petroleum products and other commodities have increased, as you can see. Then they also increase, but these are increased with much higher rate. A huge decline is registered in the export of traditional items like coffee, spices, tea, pulses, etc., due to tough international competition. Though an increase has been registered in floriculture products, fresh fruits, marine product and sugar. Then the major competitor of India, China and other East Asian countries apart from this, the gem and jewelry are other commodities that have a larger share in international trade. That was the changing opposition of uh, India's export. Now we will discuss changing that uh, changing pattern of composition of India's import. So, uh, during 1950s and 1960s, India faced serious food shortage. This country had to import food grain, capital goods, machinery and equipments at large scale. So, the balance of payment was adverse as import were more than export in spite of all the effort of import and substitution. Then, after 1970s, the success of green revolution discontinued the food grain import, but the energy crisis of 1973 replaced the import of food grain by fertilizer and petroleum as the prices of petroleum has been raised then uh, uh, it is a raw material for petrochemical industries and also used as fuel the increase may size the tempo of rising industrialization and improvement in standard of living than periodic price the rise of petroleum in international market may be another reason for this increase as well as the import of capital goods like non-electrical machinery, transport equipment, manufacture of metal and machines tool required a steady increase. This increase could be because of increasing demand in the export-oriented industrial and domestic sector. Then import of food and allied product registered a decrease because of sudden decline in import of edible oil. Then pearl and semi precious stone, gold and silver metalliferous ores and metal scrap non-ferrous metal these are other important item of india's import now we will discuss the direction of trade so india has a goal to double its share in international trade within next five years to achieve uh, this objective that is doubling its trade india has started to adopt suitable measure which includes import liberalization reduction in import duties and de-licensing and change from process to product patent and um, with the development of India's trade direction India trading share with different countries also changed then after UAE China is the second largest trading partner with India then uh, India's foreign trade is mainly carried through oceanic and air routes foreign trade via land route is only limited to the neighboring countries such as Nepal Bhutan and Bangladesh those, those who are connected by the land area then we will discuss uh, seaport as the gateway of international trade. So India has a long history of international trade via seaport as it has a long coastline and it's open to sea from three sides. So water provides smooth surface and cheap transport without any hindrance. Um, India has developed many port on its coast. These ports are named with suffix pattern like meaning port pattern in Hindi port means pattern then it is uh, interesting to know that india has more seaports on west coast than its east coast after coming of the european trader and colonization of country by the british the indian port have emerged as gateway of international trade then there are some part which have very vast area of influence and some have limited area of influence now we will discuss some major ports and minor at present india has 12 major ports and 185 minor or intermediate ports so 
for major ports central government is responsible for deciding the policy and regulate their function and for minor ports state government is responsible for the same so we will discuss important ports like uh, kandla port so this port is situated at the head of gulf of kutch the main objective of this major port are to serve the needs of the western northwestern port then this kandla port uh, is mainly designed to receive large quantity of petroleum one petroleum fertilizer so to reduce the pressure at kandla port an offshore terminal named vadinar has also been developed then it's mumbai port Uh, this is a natural harbor and has the biggest port of india the location of this port is closer to the general route from the countries of middle east uh, mediterranean countries north africa north america europe uh, where the major share of countries overseas trade is carried out the main hinterland of this port are madhya pradesh maharashtra the in nearby area then jawaharlal nehru port so the satellite port is located in navashava it was developed to relieve the pressure at uh, Mumbai port it is the largest container port in India than Marmagao these are all on the west side Marmagao port it is located at the entrance of Jowari estuary which is a natural harbor in Goa it gained significance after its remodeling in 1961 to handle iron ore export to Japan then uh, new mangalore port so it is mainly used to export iron ore and iron con- concentrates and other commodities it is located in Karnataka then uh, we have discussed this kandla mumbai uh, marmaga mangalore kochi kochi okay i have to kochi one i am there in kochi the port is i am discussing this kochi port this port is popularly known as queen of arabian sea it is a natural harbor and situated at head of vambanad koyal then kochi port is located close to the swage colombo route it serves the need of kerala southern uh, karnataka those with it attached serve the need of those states like kerala southern karnataka southwest tamil nadu then calcutta port we are done with west now start the east port calcutta port it is located at the hugli river this port has lost its significance considerably on account of the diversion of export to other ports such as vishaka patnam paradeep and satellite port haldia so it also facing the problem of silt accumulation in hugli river then haldia port it is located uh, 150 km downstream from calcutta it has been constructed to reduce con- congestion at calcutta port it handle bulk cargo like iron ore then paradeep port so paradeep the port is located in mahanadi delta and it is about 100 km from katak it has advantage of having the deepest harbor thus it best suited to handle very large vessel then odisha jharkhand chatisgarh constitutes it hinderland then visakhapatnam so it is a landlocked labors uh, landlocked harbor uh, situated in andhra pradesh it is connected to the sea by channel which is cut through solid rock and sand andhra pradesh is the main hinderland for this port and this port handle various commodity like iron ore petroleum journal cargo then there is chennai port it the artificial harbor of chennai is one of the oldest port on the eastern coast it was built in uh, around 1859 because of the shallow water near the coast it is not suitable for large ships tamil nadu and puducherry constituted hinterland then in nor port there is that in nor this is newly developed port situated 25 km from uh, north of chennai it kilometer north of chennai then it was developed to minimize the pressure at chennai port north of chennai hai, somewhere here then tuti goren tuti goren it's another port which was developed to relieve the pressure of chennai port uh, the port handle a number of commodities uh, like coal salt food grain now there are airports we discuss what the now we will discuss airports that air routes so airport play a significant role in international trade airport is a very useful for handling high value of perishable goods over long distance it take less time to transport cargo so disadvantage of air transportation is air transportation is very costly it is not suitable for transportation of heavy and bulky commodities so we are done with in this chapter we have discussed ports and airport we have discussed major port of india and airport its disadvantage and we will discuss changing pattern of composition of 
इंडिया एक्सपोर्ट एंड इम्पोर्ट नाउ जस्ट लेट्स मूव ऑन टू दी क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर डिस्कशन फर्स्ट इज ट्रेड बिटवीन टू कंट्रीज इट टर्म इट्स टर्म एज इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड देन विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द लैंड लॉक्ड हार्बर सो विशाखापटनम इज द लैंड लॉक्ड हार्बर Most of India's foreign trade is carried out through its sea and air. I think it should be land, sea and air. Okay, yeah. These are short answers. Mention the characteristic of India foreign trade. So, the nature of India foreign trade has changed over the years. So, there has been an increase in the total volume of import and export. the value of import continue to be higher than that of export so this means deficit so deficit is attributed to the price rise of crude petroleum which form a major component of india international trade even share of primary product has decreased in the total export of india whereas share of petroleum product has increased so that's why there is a deficit in balance then distinguish between port and harbor so What's the question? Okay, port is where you have set up that. Uh, I will discuss this later on. Firstly, discuss the meaning of hinterland. So, hinterland is the area served by a port. It is the area of influence of a port. It is the region lying inland from coast of a river. Then. Uh, name uh, important item which are uh, which india import from different countries so india imports uh, like fuel fertilizers paper wood uh, news print capital goods chemical pearl precious semi precious stone gold silver spices a lot of things india import name the port of india located on east coast so east coast it's calcutta in west bengal two ports calcutta and hawia then odisha it's one paradip आंध्र प्रदेश इट्स वन विशाखापटनम एंड इन तमिलनाडु थ्री पोर्ट्स चेन्नई एंड नॉर एंड तूतीगोरन नो वी विल डिस्कस दी डिस्क्राइब द कंपोजिशन ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट एंड इंपोर्ट ट्रेड ऑफ इंडिया सो कंपोजिशन ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट ट्रेड इन इंडिया इज हैज बीन अंडर गोइंग चेंज ओवर इयर द शेयर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड एलाइट प्रोडक्ट हैव डिक्लाइन वेयर एज शेयर ऑफ पेट्रोलियम एंड क्रूड प्रोडक्ट एंड अदर कमोडिटीज हैज इंक्रीज दैन अमंग एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट you can say the decline in traditional product is largely due to the competition from international market then among the agriculture product there is a great decline in the export of traditional items such as coffee spices tea and pulses the manufacturing sector alone accounted for uh, i can say 68% of india's total value export the composition of uh, import trade is machine and equipment spices steel and edible oil and chemical largely make the import basket so there has been a steep rise in import of petroleum product it is used not only as a fuel but also as industrial raw material so it indicates the tempo of rising industrialization and better standard of living next is write a note on changing nature of international trade of india so it has been changed after independence a lot of change has been come so in nature of export the composition of commodity in india has been undergoing change over year then uh, even export has been uh, there more of import and less of export so it may lead to deficit some deficit is quite good for uh, countries economy in both the question you can write the same answer moreover the answer is same but question is asked in a different way so we have discuss import and export in this chapter and uh, we have discuss about uh, port harbor in major uh, port in india both in west side and east side so that's for today next lecture we will uh, discuss about uh, next chapter so thank you